Every developer knows the challenge. Maintaining constant code documentation across teams, it can take up to 25% of development times. This includes different styles, missing details, outdated documents. Hi, I'm Stuart. Today, we're going to create a prompt that generates a comprehensive document for code snippets. This is using Amazon Bedrock's prompt management. Let's jump in and see how we can do this. Amazon Bedrock Prompt Management offers capabilities which will simplify the process of building generative AI applications. Structured prompts. Now, these define system instructions, tools, additional messages when building all of our prompts. We can use converse and invoke models for API integration. And so invoke, what this does is it catalogs prompts and it does this directly from Amazon Bedrock Converse and invoke API calls. Let's take a little look how we do this. First of all, we navigate to the Bedrock console. And then on the left-hand side, under Builder Tools, we select Prompt Management. We can click Create Prompt. There's a few input fields here that we need to do. We need to give this a name. So here I'm going to call this Code Documentation Generator. You do have to have hyphens if you're using multiple words here. The description, well, this is optional, but I'm going to be a good citizen and add this in. This here, I'm going to put in generate detailed documentation for code snippets. Again, this section is optional, so feel free to skip this if you want to. Next, just click on create. So now that we've done this, let's move on to step one. Step one lets us build our system instruction input, and this defines the model's role. So for this example, we're going to enter the following. We're just going to tell it that you are an expert in developing and specializing in code documentation. And what we're going to ask the AI to do is, is to explain the code's purpose, functionality, and document all the parameters and return the values. We can also provide usage of examples and note any dependencies for requirements, highlighting best practices and potential issues. If I was creating a runbook for documentation, this is exactly what I would put in my documentation for my guidelines. In step two, we can create variables and we enclose these by using the double curly braces. We could later pass values for these variables and at an innovation time, which are then injected into our prompt template. For this example, we use the following prompts, which include three variables, language, code snippet, and then we're going to use format as well. The generate documentation for the following code has the language in curly braces. It has the code underscore snippet in curly braces. So we need to do a little bit of work here we need to ask to please include the function class purpose, the parameters, description and types, return values and details, example usage, edge cases or limitations, and then performance considerations. We then ask for this format to be outputted in a particular style. Next, we're going to select our model. So here I'm going to select Claude 3. There's plenty to choose from and your use case might vary, but for this case, I'm just going to use Claude 3. I can just select this and leave the rest as defaults. Now, finally here in step three, we're going to configure the tools in the tools settings section for function calling. So we can define tools with names, descriptions, and input schemas to enable the model to interact with external functions and expand all of our capabilities. Here, we're going to provide a JSON schema that includes the tool information. I'm going to break this down so we can walk through this step by step. Here, we have the tool choice. So we're going to set this to auto. So this suggests that the system will automatically choose when to use this tool. Next, we have tools. Now, this is an array, and this array contains a single tool specification. And we have the tool details. We have the name, which is the generate documentation. We have a description, which is generate documentation for a given code snippet. We have input schema. Now this defines the required inputs and language. And then we have the programming language of the code, which was the language. 
we have code snippet, which is the actual code to be documented or documented, sorry. And then we have the format. So this is our desired documentation output format. So we could have a number of these, which could be either Markdown or HTML, for example. This structure is designed to allow an AI system to automatically generate documentation by providing a code snippet, then specifying its language and choosing an output format. As you've seen here, it follows a JSON schema. So this ensures that all of the necessary information is provided when we are using this tool. When the function calling or function calling, an LLM doesn't directly use the tools. What it does is instead it indicates the tool parameter needed to use it. So as a user, we must implement the logic to invoke the tool based on the model's request and feed it the results again back to the model. Once we've done all this, we can click save. Back on the overview page, we need to copy a prompt Amazon uh, resource name or ARN. This is a unique identifier for a prompt resource in Amazon Bedrock. We are going to use this later. So if you're following along, store this somewhere safe. To invoke the prompt from, for our application, we can now include the prompt identifier and version. And this is going to be part of the Amazon Bedrock Converse API call. We can evaluate different documentation styles across various models and then integrate them using Bedrock APIs. So here, let's build the following code as an example using the AWS SDK. And I'm going to do this in a Jupyter Notebook using Python and Boto3. So first up, we need to import Boto3 in JSON. After we've done this, we can set up the necessary components to interact with Amazon Bedrock. First, we need to create a Boto3 session. Boto3 is AWS's SDK for Python. We create a session using a specific AWS profile. The profile for me here contains the AWS credentials and configuration settings. Now, second, we need to create a specific client for the Amazon Bedrock runtime. We do this using bedrock.client. This creates a low-level client with Amazon runtime. This specifies that we want to interact with Bedrock runtime service or services. This setup is necessary before you can make any calls to Amazon Bedrock's foundational models. I like to think about it this way. It's similar to how you would need to log into your computer before you can open and use a specific program. So what I've done is I've copied the Amazon resource name or ARN into the model ID parameter and the Amazon Bedrock directly loads our prompt version from our prompt management library to be able to invocation the latency overheads. What this does is it simplifies the workflow and it does this by enabling direct prompt, prompt invocation through the Converse Invoke Model APIs. This is cool because it eliminates manual retrieval and formatting. It also allows a team or others on your team to reuse and share prompts and also track different versions. So it has a lot of benefits. Let's just go a little bit deeper into the Bedrock function as this is a key component of the AWS SDK for Python, which is specifically tailored to interact with Amazon Bedrock. So here, when we call the Bedrock runtime invoke model function, we are essentially telling Bedrock, hey, I have this task. Can you use your AI smarts to handle it? Next, the parameter ID, or here, is like a specific tool you can choose from Amazon Bedrock's toolbox. It works by identifying the exact AI model you want to use for this job. In this case, we're using the model with the ID that we copied earlier, the ARN. Beneath this is the body parameter. This is where we provide all the details of our task. It's like giving the AI a set of instructions. Inside of the body, we have a prompt variable. So think of this as a customizable setting. You could specify the programming language, provide your code snippet to analyze, or even dictate the desired output format. Remember we asked this earlier when we were talking about HTML and markdowns of our format. And so finally, we have the content type and accept headers. This ensures that AI understands the format of our request and the format we expect in the response. In this case, we are using JSON, which is a common data format for computers. Now, finally, we want to print everything out and all of our details. 
I am using pretty print and I'm using this because it makes it nice and easy to read. If we were using this as an application, we could just print out the response. Now this is run, we can break down this into three sections and see our results. There's the top level structure, the content section, and the usage statistics, which is all really good. The response indicates that our input was a Python hello world function, and the process here consumed 560 input tokens and generated 228 output tokens. After this, the response stopped because it it's a complete tool use operation. This structured response format allows for programmatic processing of the model's output tracking and usage of resources. Amazon Bedrock Prompt Management simplifies all of your generative AI development, and it does this by offering a centralized platform for creating customized and managed prompts. With features like system instructions and definitions, tool configuration, and also prompt variant comparison, Developers, well, we can now easily build and deploy AI solutions that generate more relevant output. You can start automating all of your code documentation now with Amazon Bedrock Prompt Management, and there's tons of other features that you can implement too. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see even more hands-on technical content, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the AWS Developers YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.